guys so much for tuning in to another episode of Authors to Know and Their Books to Read. I'm so excited that you have decided to tune into the show today. My name is Martinique Brown. I am your host, and I'm really excited for our guest author, Kiana Cannon. Kiana co-authored a book called Grace to Recover. So what we need you to do is go ahead and share this video now so that more people will know about Kiana as well as um, her book and that they will know about the show. If you are interested in purchasing Grace to Recover, make sure um, you go to the description box and you'll see the dollar signs. And it actually has Kiana's um, Facebook page and just send her a message and let her know that you're interested in purchasing the book. Another thing is I would love for you to go ahead and um, just subscribe to my YouTube channel. That is also listed in the description box. And if you truly enjoy these shows that I create, I would love for you to give a financial gift of any amount. Um, and you can go to my PayPal link or you can even go to my GoFundMe page. So Kiana, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me on. I feel so blessed. <laughs> you are welcome. So can yes. you just tell our viewers just a little bit more about yourself? Well, um, my name is, as she said, Kiana Cannon. My pen name is Latasia. And a little bit of background on me, short and to the sweet, I call it. Um, I'm an educator, an author, a speaker, um, an Army veteran. Yes, go my sisters. Come um, on. And so that's just a little bit about me. I'm a mom and a wife. And so you know how it is for us women. We play many, many roles, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's just a little bit about some of the things that I do. Definitely, definitely. So now I know that you, you know, you touched on your pen name, Latasia. Um, why did you decide to create one? And what does that name represent to you? Okay, first of all, I, I used it because I used to hate that name. Okay. Okay. But no, real. I mean, let's do real talk, right? I, would, I grew up, my um, auntie named me, she wanted my first name to be Latasia. Okay. Um, but my mom was like, no, no, no. And so she gave me the middle name, Latasia. Now, as I've grown older, you uh -huh. know, it's not a common name. I've grown to love it. And so um, I chose to use it because it's not a common name. Okay. Because I, I love it now. You know, sometimes the things that we're insecure about, we just have to put them out there. Mm -hmm. And so th that was one thing that I chose to do. I even chose to name part of my company, um, Latasia Enterprises, with that name. Um, for that reason so that's just part of it and plus I really like it now but do some people get confused you know what I did have like family members friends who knew me um get confused mm -hmm. and I just had to let them know I started using um Kiana Latasia Cannon instead okay. of just Kiana Cannon so you can kind of recognize my pen name and I found that a lot of authors have pen names so I wanted okay. I did do a little research to make sure that it wasn't Un, so uncommon mm -hmm. and so um, some authors do use pen names and so that's just what I chose to do so I have to let people know it's Kiana Latasia Cannon now I got you I got you thank you for um just schooling us and helping <laughs> us have a better understanding of like the purpose of pen names especially yes. why you decided um to have your pen name as Latasia um so now who is Grace to Recover written for Listen, it is really written for um, all women. I'm, I mean, it's, it's written for women in general because mm -hmm. it's about uh, me and 14 other uh, uh, women. And it's written for aunties, uh, mothers, veterans, business owners, wives, you know, the, the gamut, all the things that we are, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's who is written for the particular audience. It's both, I think it's for a more mature woman. It's not, I don't think it's for a teenage girl, right? Okay. So it's it's really for women, right? And we're stories about women for women to help them see that we've been through and overcome, right? Mm -hmm. And give them the opportunity to see that sometimes we feel like we by ourselves and to read somebody else's story and it gives us permission then to tell mm -hmm. our own. That's good, that's good. Now we actually have, um, Katina Barnett in the house. She said, hey, sis. 
<laughs> so Katina, if you could just make sure that you go ahead and share this video now um, so more people will know about Kiana and her book, um, Grace to Recover. So can you tell us more about your specific contribution um, to the book? Wonderful. So my specific contribution to the book is I'm in chapter three and my contribution is called The Mirror. It's called The Mirror and it's called The Mirror for a reason. Um, I went through a very, very dark season in my life. It's not an uncommon story. And then I remember not like not being able to get out of that funk, right? Mm -hmm. Not you, really being able to for real. Like it was like, how long is this going to last, Lord? How long am I going to be here? You know how we go. Mm -hmm. And so one day I was looking in the mirror and I was just looking for a long time. I was staring at myself. And talking to God, you know, tears, you know what we do. Oh. Tears rolling down, sob stories, woe is me, you yeah. know, we do, right? And God said, I need you to take a closer look. And I was oh. like, first of all, I'm looking around like, am I, you know, did I hear mm -hmm. something more crazy, right? Yeah. Take a second look. And I'm like, what? He said, I need you to see yourself like I see you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and I know it might not have been epiphany for anybody else, but for me, it was like, what? Oh my God. So I started to look closer and I started to look beyond just my appearance. Cause sometimes we don't think we look good. We're not good enough and all of that. And so he gave me the idea to put sticky notes on the mirror. And I call it my mirror ministry, y'all. And if you go on my page, um, um, Ignite Your Faith, you'll see I have pictures of it up um, where I just put sticky notes to remind me. It was scripture. It didn't have to be scripture. It was just words to encourage myself every day. Remember you are blessed. Remember you are loved. Psalms 23. And I have, a, it's colorful. Cause you know, I like color cause I'm colorful. Uh -huh. And so I had all the sticky notes up and it just, helps me to get a little oomph in the morning, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's the first thing I see and the last thing I see before I go to bed. That's good. That's good. So now how long ago was this that um, you were going through this, where you, you know, were standing Ooh, in the mirror and... Girl, I don't know if this is a time in the broadcast for that, okay? <laughs> but I'll make the short of it. That's I say, the sweet of it. Uh, so um, this process has taken me about a year and a half to two years. Okay. okay, two years, and it actually, um, I am a woman of faith, and it actually took place in a woman that I admire so much living room, and that was the breakthrough that it happened. You know, sometimes we expect it to happen in the places that we visit regular or our church, but guess what? God will do the uncommon thing, right, to bless you in a place that you don't know that you're going to get blessed. Mm -hmm. And so I was faithful to the meetings, and I came one night, and it was the beginning of my breakthrough. And I thank God for that. And I thank uh, Shirley Latour for that as well, because it was her home that I was in. So now in the book, do you actually talk about specifically what you were dealing with that made you even um, begin to be in that funk? Yes. Uh, some things from my childhood. You know, we all have stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And see, here's the thing. This is what I think people don't realize, especially you know, adults who mistreat children or whatever. What you're doing in inadvertently is put your skeletons, putting your skeletons into their closet where it doesn't belong, right? And so you hold the skeletons of these people with you throughout, you know, your life because you don't know how to get rid of them. You know what I'm saying? They've been misplaced. They're in the wrong space is what I told them. I'm not carrying this around anymore. And so what I did was I real I came to the realization that I was carrying burdens that I didn't have to carry because mm -hmm. whatever happened was not my fault. Okay. You know, and so that was the beginning of me realizing I'm holding all of this. It's so easy to get rid of. All I have to do is unpack my suitcase. Come on. Why am I keeping it closed? Unpack mm -hmm. it and unlet and let it go, right? Mm -hmm. And so that was the beginning. And so I do let them know a little bit of background story on where it all began in my okay. childhood. I'll give you a snippet. So now are you um, in your, in chapter three, are you progressively just taking us through that transition of where you were and then how you got to that point of where you are today? Yes, so I'll give you the short of it because it's one chapter and I have more to come. But mm -hmm. um, I start off from when I was a child because a lot of times, I feel like if we don't unpack those things that impact us, right, 
-hmm. they'll begin to infect us over time, right? So it's like anything else. If we don't take care of our infections, they get worse, right? So I found myself in a dark place, in a dark room with, with you know, no, what I felt like was no light. And so that's what happened because I hadn't dealt with those things from my childhood. And I know we say it all the time, but we're still walking around broken. So it needs to continue to be said until more people are set free. Mm -hmm. And so we need to unpack those things. We need to start from the beginning, right? Dig that root up, get that out, and then go one step at a time. Mm -hmm. It's easier that way. I used to try to lose weight at the same time, stop doing drugs, stop doing all that at the same time, and it would overwhelm me. But when I slowed down and start from the beginning mm -hmm. and said, this is where it started, right? And then I take you, give you a short snippet of my front story, mm -hmm. right? And I tell you how it began. And then I kind of skip down to the part where I go into the mirror ministry because I have other books coming. Okay. Okay. So now, because this was something that um, you did have to revisit in your childhood, and you know your parents and your family members and your friends, um, they know that you contributed to this book. Did you have to prepare them in any way of um, just letting them know what they were about to read? Okay. Well, first of all, thank goodness I didn't get too, 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 too deep. Okay. But second of all, I'm gonna be honest. Um, in this case, I didn't warn anybody but my husband because writing this kind of information goes to places that can bring things up, right? Uh -huh. That's why I use. That's part of the reason why I use my pen name. I didn't use any specific names. You know what I'm saying inside of it because I don't want to put, you know, anybody on blast. People change, right? We mm -hmm. we out of that season in our lives. And so for that reason, I did. But I didn't like make fun calls. I told my truth, you know, the way that I know it, you know. Um, unfortunately, um, I'm not close with a lot of people in my family that I went through this trauma with. Okay. Um, but all has been forgiven just because I know who I am and I know whose I am. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now, why did you want to be a part of this collabor collaboration um, with the other authors? Girl, because look, I know I have to write my story, mm -hmm. but it's a story. And I thought this would be a good beginning to start. You know what I'm saying? It's not sunshine and rose story to like the end where you get some breakthrough and some light. So you would have to dig deep. And so uh, when, when Shirley put it on a table, I'm telling you, sis, I've almost backed out 50 times. Like, I'm not going to do this. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I'm not going to do this. Um, but she was like, no, you know, your story needs to be told. You need to say something. You need to get it out. This is the beginning. And so um, I did. I did. And to be honest, it caused a little riff. You know, I was feeling feelings, you know. Um, my husband was like, oh, my gosh, you, why didn't you? I noticed what you were going to go through. I was just thinking about it because we were going through at home. You know, all those feelings were coming up. And so it was a process. But she, I kept at it. I kept at it. And she wouldn't let me out of it anyway, right? Yeah. So, um, I kept it going. That's good. So now what did you actually learn about yourself as you were, you know, um, just having to relive some of these things Ooh. that you went through? <laughs> you, you know what? Why are you taking me here? Look, you were good. You good. I know. So listen, <laughs> <laughs> so listen let me tell you. Um, I learned really, and I'm not bragging, like I'm a warrior woman, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot about myself. Like, I can get through this. I can do this. I realized that I was, like, minimizing myself. You That's know what good. I'm saying? On such a level, mm -hmm. you know, just completely not knowing what I'm worth. Like, seriously. That's good. Um, I remember thinking oh, my self-esteem can't go any lower. And then something would happen in my life. And it would sink to a new low. Mm -hmm. Right? So after I wrote this, and it was cathartic not that i'll never have trouble again mm -hmm. but nobody will be able to do that to me again on that level right mm -hmm. i'm standing in my truth i am a warrior woman i am a conqueror i am an overcomer these things are true you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying the fact may be yes i went through all of this right but the truth is because i came out of it i am who i am and i'm gonna stand in that because sometimes 
you just don't feel it, right? You just don't feel like you're that way because of baggage, because of things that's happened. And so I learned that I'm stronger than I ever thought I was mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So now what type of support group or, um, or who did you like use? I mean, cause I know that you are a woman of, um, of God. So was it all like God that helped you or did you have to create a support group for yourself? Let me tell you something. God uses people. And don't get me wrong. God first in everything that I do. And that's just my personal. But he uses people to bless us. So, mm -hmm. yes, I was surrounded by beautiful sisters uh, like um, the lady who started all of this, Miss Shirley Latour. Mm -hmm. I had her. I had Katina Barnett, who was one of my business partners. Both of them are in the book. And so I did. I had a community. I had my church family. And even though me and my husband were kind of whatever, he's still my rock, right? He's still my rock or die. And so I had him. So I did have family um, that loved me and that loved on me through the process. Because when you are a child of abuse, you never feel loved. That's the key thing. You never feel good enough. And so, to be honest, I still go there sometimes. I have to check myself often, right? Mm -hmm. Because the abuse took place like the first 15 or 16 years of my life. And mm -hmm. so, it was like, I fall back into that every now and then where I don't feel love. But that's where my ministry, mirror ministry comes in. And that's where it blesses me. What would you say to somebody that has experienced um abuse as a child but they are not healed or delivered from that what do you think they should do to start that healing process okay i'm glad you asked um because i am a faith empowerment strategist and this is what i do um the first thing i would tell anybody and i know this is difficult to do because i'm going through this process right now is to face it, right? So what I mean, what do I mean by that? Acknowledge that it happens, feel the feelings. Listen, it is not a feel good process. But on the other side, I see, see, a lot of times I got stuck in the middle because I wouldn't really, I wasn't willing to go through the middle to get to the other side. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so you have to face that thing. So the first thing you want to do is say, okay, it happened. Now what? What feelings? have I dealt with because of that? Whether it's self-loathing, I'm not good enough, I'm not, you know, all that. And that's part of what I do as a faith empowerment strategist, if anybody wants to talk to me or reach out to me. But just the beginning is acknowledgement. Just the beginning is saying it happened, it was not your fault. Say that to yourself. Because sometimes, you know, we rehearse that record over and over again. Listen, you can change the narrative. It is your job to change your narrative. Mm -hmm. And so I had to repeat it to myself over and over again, like a broken record, because guess what? That you're not good enough played over and over again. It, so I changed it. Guess what? I took that record off and I put on a new one. Do you understand? And I had to tell myself every day. And so that's the beginning. Another thing I would encourage you to do is to do that mirror ministry. Do that. You do, oh my God, it blesses me because it is the first thing I see in the morning and the last thing I see before I go to bed because I have to brush my teeth. Now, y'all don't judge me if y'all see my mirror and been clean for a while. Listen, uh -huh. I'm getting my breakthrough, okay? And I'm not going to judge you when you get yours, okay? Uh -huh. so yes, those are two key things you can do. Um, and the third thing is a support group. A support group is very, very important because you're going to be going through emotions that you can't necessarily handle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying alone so now do you want to share with the viewers the type of abuse was it um oh, sure. verbal or sexual or girl or you physical know, let me get off this line uh, anyway um no seriously um it was sexual trauma it was um physical abuse mm -hmm. um yes girl if I told you like it was some it was some deep um things that went on even beyond um the sexual abuse and and that's like worse right that's bad right you think that's the worst of it you think that um but molested by more than one person in my family people who were supposed to, you know men in my life who were supposed to love me and take care of me and I know a lot of women can identify with that we we mm -hmm. really need to release that trauma and we will re realize 
who we are, like I said, that we're warrior women, that we're survivors against the odds. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To be in this skin right now, where I'm at, I consider myself a survivor. Definitely. definitely. So it, was, it was. It was sexual abuse. It was physical abuse. It was verbal abuse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now, what would you say to those family members that, um, because I feel like so much now we are hearing, um, I know that in the Black community, like, don't keep it as a secret because you know how um, we have family members that will say to us, well, you know, this is, don't, don't be spreading our business. You know, don't tell other people about what's going on. What would you say to those people that wants to always just keep those deep, dark secrets that allows it to continue on in the family? You know what? Number one, I want to say to those people, this is the reason why we have both broken people walking around on the earth today. Mm -hmm. God told me, he spoke to me one day, he said, you heal the individual, you heal the nation, because it's nations in us. When we birth a child, we don't know where that lineage is going to go, right? Mm -hmm. And so my thing is, when you tell that child, don't tell, don't whatever, one, it gives them an the impression that you're they not loved. And that's so key. Just studying psychology, that is so key. Knowing that you love and part of a community, if you don't know those things, you will go anywhere. People can tell you who you are and you will believe it. You have no self-identity. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you lose is, I'm not loved, I'm nobody, right? When you tell me to shut up, don't say nothing, don't tell anybody, that says to me, I'm worthless. Well, it said it to me. Mm -hmm. I'm not worth anything. I'm not worth taking up for. I'm not worth you loving. You know what I'm saying? And I know that's not what they mean, but it's ramifications behind that, right? So you have to weigh that. Is it worth your child's dignity, soul, security? Mm -hmm. Those are key components to coming into yourself. Mm -hmm. And so you lose that in the process of you being quiet, mm -hmm. right? It's like it happened. So it happens to a lot of people. But to me, the real crime is being silent. Mm -hmm. It's the silence. That's the crime because people are going to do bad things all the time, right? Sometimes mm -hmm. we can't control that, but we can control our voice. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? The whole point is they try to silence you so you don't have a voice. But while you're silent, you're, you're hurting. You know what I'm saying? You're in pain. You know, you don't know what to do with yourself. Mm -hmm. And so consider the cost, family members. Consider the, it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. It's not worth it. Mm -hmm. They could be the next president, the next whatever. But because of you telling them don't talk, you know what I'm saying? They won't give birth, or they'll be like me, 38, just realizing who you are. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but we want those things to be birthed early in life, whoever you are, in all your greatness. Mm -hmm. The earlier you start, the better. So family members, please, please don't, don't, don't silence these children and tell them, don't say anything. It's more ramifications than you think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I appreciate you for um, just opening up, you know, to us and just letting us know exactly, um, you know, what type of abuse that, you know, you actually experienced and how you were, you know, how you're handling it. Because I think it's so key that you, you just let us know that this is not something that is over and done with it. You know, it's something that you have to deal with, you know, on a continual basis. And I think that that's one of the beauties of, um, especially being um, a follower of Jesus Christ in that, you know, we know we can go to God um, when we do have those moments of um, like, I don't, I can't get through today. You yeah. know, so amen for um, you and trusting in God. Um, through all of this. Yes. Um, so, so what are the topics of the other co-authors that's us in Grace to Recover? So she has broken it down into sections, y'all. Y'all want to get this book. Let me tell y'all. So the first one is secrets. The secrets, um, I think, are dealing with the traumas of childhood, like I I occur. So everybody has different stories about what happened to them. And I'll read you, like, the first chapter is named um, rethink the possibility. No, the second chapter is named Rethink the Possibilities. Um, what else? Survivor um, is chapter 10. So it goes into different sections. Mm -hmm. Let me see what else. I have some good titles. 
um, pressed but not crushed or destroyed is one of the topics, y'all. Y'all, that was a good That's read. Good. I ain't gonna tell nobody else's story, but I'm gonna let y'all know. <laughs> Um, you know, the many shades of me, that's chapter five. So she has it broken down into two categories, okay. um, secrets. And then the second category is loss and fear. So mm -hmm. those are some things that we're dealing with. Secrets, okay. loss and fear. That's, that's just, so those are the things that need to be unpacked and dealt with. Mm -hmm. So now how do you feel that this book could really just help somebody be delivered from the strongholds in their life? Well, you know what, let me speak from firsthand. You know, the best, I feel like, um, the best advice is firsthand advice, right? So stuff that, that I've seen it do for me. Mm -hmm. um, reading this book has helped me to know, one, I'm not alone. Sometimes we box ourselves in I, and, and we put up a wall, but we don't realize when we put up that wall, people can't come in, but we can't get out, right? So it, it's a catch-22, right? So, oh, I'm locked. Can't nobody hurt me, but then you, then you can't get out. You locked yourself in. So it's mm -hmm. helped me to understand that through some of these stories. Um, so when I tell you it will bless you, I'm telling you it'll bless you from firsthand experience, That's not true. from vicarious experience, right? That's different. Mm -hmm. And so this, this is pretty, this is a jewel and a blessing. Um, you could do book studies. You could, you know, if you want to order a bunch, let me know. It's so good for your sister circles, you know, for you to just, um, it don't have to be in a church. That's the thing. That's the thing I keep telling people. I love my church and I go to church faithfully, but we all need our breakthrough, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody's not going to get their breakthrough in the four walls. Mm -hmm. And I got my breakthrough in the living room. Okay. In little old Colleen, Texas. Mm -hmm. And so if he did it for me, he can do it for you. And this can be part of your breakthrough. Amen. That's good. That's good. So with so many books out there that really just helps people, you know, just break through, break free from their past. Why do you feel that Grace to Recovery is a great book for people to add to their library? Ooh, you know why? Because it's a diverse group of women. Mm -hmm. it's, you have diversity in this piece. So many different women from different backgrounds live in different states, uh, different stores, different experiences. Sometimes, here's the thing, sometimes you can experience the same thing and a person's perspective can be different, right? That's key because I can help all the people that I can understand from my perspective, right? And somebody else may have went through what I went through and they have a different perspective. So it's wonderful all the perspectives that you're gonna get. You're gonna find yourself somewhere in this book, right? Mm -hmm. You're gonna find yourself and that's the point. That's why this is the book you need to have. Um, Good. All the books are great, but you know I'm biased and partial. Right. <laughs> you know, all the books are great, but listen, you'll find yourself somewhere in here. I believe that's the difference. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Some of these women are veterans, teachers, all kind of professional women, right? So if you're starting your journey, going through your journey, or coming out of your journey, this book is for you. And I think the one, um, one key thing is... Um, we all know people's personal stories. You know, we know we have friends, we have family members that have gone through things, and it may not even it may not even be that you have experienced something personally. But um, some of the the chapters that Kiana mentioned, maybe you know somebody else that has struggled you know, with this or um, that they have experienced. And so, you know, we all know that Christmas is coming. Come and, on, so, <laughs> and so it is really beneficial when you know of something that could help somebody else. Um, I know that there have been times where maybe financially I did not have it, but I said, you know what, Jesus, I know this is going to help somebody. And so I went ahead and purchased you know, an item for somebody that I knew was going to help them. And I, I'm just telling you, like, God just blesses you so much, you know, when you are um, willing to um, just help somebody else. And sometimes it's not always our words that can help, but mm -hmm. sometimes people need to just take time and process things things themselves. That's why I love books so much, yes. you know, because I don't feel rushed exactly to finish it and I can read it on my own time and I can write my own notes and all that stuff so well, even, 
even if you're not personally going through something, yes. um, we all know people that um, that struggle yes. with certain things, and it's it's okay to be a blessing to somebody else. Come on, I look, I love everything you just said. Uh. <laughs> okay, so but I do want to say this: I did have um, some women come to a meeting at my church, and they bought about five books because they wanted to bless other women. That's they good. truly, truly did. Listen. I know it's cliche, but sharing is truly caring, right? Mm -hmm. Sharing is truly, truly caring. Um, buy a book for a sister for Christmas. Let her know that you love her. You know what I'm saying? Start a sister circle around it. You don't know how this may open up somebody and push them towards their breakthrough. This is part of the process that did that for me. And I will forever be grateful for the opportunity to be a part of this, right? Mm -hmm. And I won't I want everyone to have the same experience who sits up, grab them a cup, right? And just read a few stories. Mm -hmm. Listen, how about you just start with the chapter that speaks to you? Mm -hmm. Just start there, right? Start at that process. And then bless a sister, give her one. Maybe y'all can do it together. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because guess what? It's power in numbers. It, it's, the, it's the power of two or three, you know what I'm saying? So I think that's important. Definitely. So now I know that you actually touched on um, that, you know, you possibly have a few books cooking in the kitchen. Do you want to share with the viewers um, some of the books that Look. you are um, desiring <laughs> to spill the tea? Yeah. I don't know if I'm ready to spill the tea. No, <laughs> I do have a few books. Um, in the words, one is another a collaboration and one is um, something that God uh, laid on my heart. Mm -hmm. And it's called 26 Days of Praise. And I know everybody wants to know why the number 26. Get the book and you're going to find out. Mm -hmm. You're going to find out. <laughs> Listen, 26 Days of Praise is going to be an ebook. I don't know if I'm going to put it out, publish it. But it definitely will be an e ebook. You're going to want to grab it. I'm going to tell you why 26 is significant to me and to you if you're a believer. So now do you have a um, proposed release date? I'm trying to release it before the end of this year. Okay. Um, and then I have another project in conjunction with that. So if they come out at the same time, I won't be mad, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now... Um, the wise thing to do, guys, is to follow Kiana on her Instagram, Twitter, or her Facebook pages, and then you'll be notified um, when she does post that release date. And remember, all of her information is in the description box. So now, can you just tell us more about your businesses, um, Latasia Speak and Latasia Styles? Okay, so listen. I just found my voice, so I'm loud and proud, okay? Yeah, that's um, good. <laughs> uh, look, what I didn't realize is that it was already in me, okay? Mm -hmm. So God spoke to me. He said, Dora, you're an orator. You were living a pistol. I'm like, what do you do with that? He said, you talk, and you and through your speech, people will get their breakthrough. I said, really, God? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so guess what? I was just obedient, right, and just started doing it. And ever since then, I have been feeling blessed. And so Latasia Speaks is my speaker page um, where um, I will take engagements if you want me to come out and speak. Um, and some things that I can speak on um, is marriage, um, is the military, education, um, and, you know, deliverance, being delivered from some things. I'm giving, and not only that, because a lot of times people say a thing but bless you with some tools and some scriptures that will that will set you free, right? Because I always tell people, you come out, you get what you need, but then use the tools. That's how you get set free. Use what's given to you at the conference or at the whatever, right? Because we want to go from glory to glory. We don't want to stay stagnant. And so that's part of what I do um, with Latasia Speaks. I go out and I speak. I've spoken at, conf at conferences and spoken at um, church. Because, you know, just at church doing my thing, mm -hmm. you know. And so that's Latasia Speaks, okay? That's my uh, speaker. I'm a, um, And I do that under my faith empowerment strategies. That's what I am. And then I have Latasia Styles. Now, Latasia Styles is like 
a style coach, so to speak. So I can get your closet together already, what you have in your closet, right? We can work that. Um, and I did that for Miss Ashley the other day. I'm gonna say, can you write a quick testimony, girl? But anyway, <laughs> um, because I put us together for our photo shoot, girl. But anyway, uh, so I do that, right? So I can help you kind of put your uh, image together. You know how people are on Facebook and you see them in the same cap or the same glasses because they brand in they self or whatever. So I can give you kind of like a personal style, right? Okay. And I can also shop for you and things like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So now what is a faith empowerment strategist? Girl, a faith empowerment strategist help you unlock your faith. People don't understand. Faith is the key to a lot of things. It's mm -hmm. the key to a lot of things. And listen, God told me a long time ago, I said, well, why certain people have this? And why certain people have that? And they, they don't seem like they believers. Because he told me, he said, a principal is a principal daughter. Whoever worked that principal, that's who's going to be blessed by that principal, right? Okay. And so um, that's what it is. They believe in they so fervently. They're believing in a certain thing, and it's happening for them. And so my faith is in the Lord. And so that's what I help you do. Unlock, you know, level up your faith, right? Give you tools right to level up your faith get unstuck so to say and i know that's a common word but it's the truth you know what i'm saying but i use uh faith-based principles so to say biblical principles doing that but how would you actually help somebody to know that they need a faith empowerment strategist Girl, get with me, because I'll show you. Because I'm a product of it, all right? So I know I can't help the world, but I know I'm here to bless somebody. Mm -hmm. So you know you need a faith empowerment strategist. One, if you're a Christian, you'd have been, a, you know, 50 million conferences, conferences, you go to church every day, and you still can't seem to grasp it. Let me tell you something. It's something so powerful in the one-on-one, -on -one, like I, in the one-on-one. -on -one. Like I told you. I got my breakthrough in the living room. You know what I'm saying? So it's so much power in just having that person devoted to you to help you. I mm -hmm. love church, but it's a corporate experience, right? It's corporate. It's a thing we we all do, right? Um, and that's great. But sometimes you need that one-on-one, -on -one, and that's where I would come in. You know, especially if you are a believer. And, and you're trying to find your way. That's where I was. God gave me that name. I didn't give it to myself. He said, you're a faith empowerment strategist. I'm like, what the heck is that, Lord? Mm -hmm. And so that's what he told me, you know, helping people get in their breakthrough using the biblical principles. If you're already a believer, we're starting there. But guess what? We need to level that thing up, right? Because listen, we are supposed to be showing people kingdom. And so we are free and free indeed. But when we walk around and we don't act like it because we're stuck in certain places and we don't, and there's nothing wrong with that, first of all, because I was there too. So don't feel bad. Just do something about it. You don't have to feel bad about it, but let somebody help you, right? Let somebody help you get out of your own way. Definitely, definitely. So now do you actually offer um, your services virtually? I offer my service uh, virtually and I offer my services, you know, if you're here in the area. So how do, how do you want to know how virtually works, right? Yeah. You want to know. So listen, <laughs> they have this beautiful thing called Zoom, guys. It uh -huh. is so awesome. I have it. That's what uh, we're on I'm now, y'all. You want to use, right? Mm -hmm. um, I can download it and we can, we can do this, right? Um, and that's praying together. That's, I'll pray for you and I'll get strategies and, and, and then I'll come to you. And, and it's a person, this is what I love about the, the faith empowerment strategies, at least what he brought it to my thing. It'll be a personal experience. It won't be laid out like, oh, I have all these paperwork. You fill it out like once I spit on. No, this is a unique and personal experience that you will have. Mm -hmm. And so that's the difference, right? Um, and so that's what I want to bring. But we can do it virtually by us having, look, like I'm seeing you and I can touch you mm -hmm. just from us, you know, connecting visually this way, right? Mm -hmm. Or through telephone calls, you know yeah. what I'm seeing? And you'll yeah. get your way through. So. so now do you offer a free consultation for somebody that is like possibly just um, on the fence? Like, oh, do I want this? Do I need this? Yes, definitely. Listen. Yeah. And look, I have to look, I'm a businesswoman, so I have to stop myself. Girl, I will, girl, I will talk to you to get your breakthrough, right? I got a bad habit. 
because this is what I do. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's what I love. Um, but I do do a free 30 minute consultation just to see, because listen, if we're not a good fit, I'm not gonna, we're not gonna string each other alone. We're mm -hmm. not gonna do that. And so I do a brief talk, a brief history, actually exactly what is it that you need, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what is it that you're looking for, right? And sometimes people come to you and they don't know what they, they like, I just don't know. And so what I'll do um, as a faith empowerment strategist is we'll pray, we'll pray. And then I'll go before God and I'll come back to you and let you know what I thought. And what you can, but the beautiful thing is, God said you can try the spirit. So if I'm not right, you can say, girl, that ain't neither me, girl, you way off, right? Mm -hmm. But if you come to me and give me the opportunity, we pray together, we can figure out a way for you to come up out of this and become the warrior woman. I know women have inside of them, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So now how should a person come to you like, should they come because i i feel that mentally the person has to be open-minded and have a willingness about them but are you the type of person that is like you know even if you're not where i would desire you to be i still want you to come no and that's listen. what this is for so listen sis that's where i was at that's who this is for. You like on the fence, like just give me a conversation. And I'm not saying everybody is going to fit, but if you don't have open mind, whatever the situation is, mm -hmm. that consultation will let us know, first of all, what you need. And if you even have, if you, ever, if you even need what I have to offer, mm -hmm. that's what that's about, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not that you have to be on a certain level. Oh yes, I love, we all love that, right? We want a person already at this level. It's not always about that, right? I'm trying to get you to one level, then maybe somebody else can take you to the next level. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I can work with somebody on the level or I can work with somebody who just started. I've been in ministry about 14 years. Mm -hmm. And so I've been doing this without even realizing that's what I've been doing. And God just slapped the name on it, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yes, ma'am. That's good, that's good. Well. Kiana, I, I definitely appreciate you for being on Authors to Know and their books to read and just letting us know more about um, your book, Grace to Recover. And I thank you all for just taking time to watch another episode of Authors to Know and their books to read. Remember, um, share this video now so that more people will know about Kiana and just her ministry and how she can actually help other individuals um, just break free of some of the bondage that they may be struggling with. Um, also, make sure you follow and like our Facebook pages and all this information is in the description box. I would love for you to give a financial gift if you truly um, enjoy the shows that I create and host. And I hope that you all have a great night. We will talk to you all later. Bye-bye.